well, I wanted to make this video because, um, as of right now anyways, I don't see any out there on YouTube or anywhere else that shows, uh, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show. Uh, first of all, right off the bat, this is a USB that it's starting up on, and you'll notice there's no, uh, counter. Like right here, uh, the name of the track on this song is Modern Man. I don't know where in the song I am. I mean, obviously I could listen to it. Um, but this is one of my biggest complaints. I, I'm coming from a Kenwood uh, DNX 9960. I got that back in 2010. And um, it's it's been great. I mean, it's it's still going strong. Uh, and I've tried to upgrade last year to the DNN 992, and that thing took a crap on me right before my warranty was about to go, so luckily I could get rid of it. And I've been waiting for this. This is the DNX 893S, and I uh, was so happy this thing came out. And there's a lot of cool things on it, but I'm actually bringing it back. Um, uh, for $1,200, uh, it's, to me, it's not really worth it. Um, the thing I mentioned a minute ago, there's, I mean, you can't see where, <laughs> how far in a song you are. And the same with a CD. Um, I called Kenwood. Yeah, they're like, no, yeah. They, they told me to go like this, touch this little thing here. And these are all like blanked out. There's nothing here, uh, which is another stupid thing. It's like there's design flaws all over the place on this thing. There's a lot of really cool things. A lot of bad things, though, too. It's like this thing was supposed to come out in March or April. Uh, it didn't actually come out until, like, July 1st, and I heard that they were, like, finishing some finishing touches, whatever, and that's why it took so long. I mean, they still could have made some things better on this. Um, like, you go to search, like, okay, I want to play, I want to look, let's go to a new um, song here. You go up here, folder list, fold, what? Why is there even an arrow there? Like, there's, why is there an arrow here? There's nothing there. You, um, it's like it's stupid. Um, there's like a thing called like a category list with other, um, like if you had an iPod, I don't have an iPod, but if you did, I think you can get the category list on here, which would then let you look at uh, browse by genre, uh, artist name, album. Um, I can't remember what else there is, but I mean, that's what you used to be able to do on, on my DNX 9960. Uh, you can't do that anymore on a USB on here. Um, Anyways, if you hit home, you'll come back here. It looks like this. Um, this is cool. I like how the clock is gigantic. You can do this, I guess. I don't know. I don't really like this. I think this is stupid. Or you can go like here and it shows like a compass, whatever. I don't know. I just keep it on this for the for the few days that I've had this thing. Um, whatever. Let me go back here for a second. If you go like this, you can like sort of browse by... Um, th these are all the tracks in this album. Which now the USB is all folder based, so like it's all folders, I guess. I don't, I don't know anywhere anywhere else to use it, any other way to use it. Um, I just was testing. I put like one from each letter in here, a bunch of different stuff. I listen to all sorts of stuff. Um, you go like this, you could look at your audio stuff. I'm not gonna go into this because, from what I can tell, there's nothing different here on the audio settings that have been on like all the Kenwoods for the last many years. Uh, navigation, Garmin, not much to say here. I mean, it, it works great. Don't get me wrong. It's, this is really cool. Like I think I, people complain about Garmin. I don't know why I think it works great. I'm, you know, people are going to complain about everything kind of like I'm doing now, but <laughs> the Garmin is great. I have nothing to say bad about the Garmin. I, not yet. I did use it. Um, no problems. Uh, Sirius XM, which I do have hooked up. Um, this is actually really cool. It's an upgrade from my 9960. Uh, biggest thing I like, well, the album art or cover art or channel art, whatever you call it. If you actually go to like, uh, an actual like station that plays, um, songs, you know, you could, wait, did it? Well, now it's not really working. I have a really crappy signal right now. That's another cool thing. You can see it's got like the signal strength indicator. It's not actually showing album art. I mean, it's showing the channel art. But anyways, that's whatever. 
it's still cool. My other 9960 didn't do that. One thing I like about this too is that you can pause it and then a little counter starts going here showing you like how far behind you are. So if you like hit play now, um, you're back. You're just at a constant six seconds behind. And if you wanted to, let's say you pause it again and now you're at eight, nine, ten, whatever. You could then hold this to fast forward back or you could pause it again and you could go all the way back to when you first started on the channel. It's pretty cool. I don't know. I like the pause feature. I think that's really cool because, well, it's just any number of reasons you could come think of that. They have all these other cool things like tune scan too, like tune to a channel and it'll automatically start at the beginning of the song that is on, you know, when you tuned into the station. Um, same thing here with presets. This will come back out if you, the presets. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't have much to say on this. Um, like I said, I had the DNN 992 last year. So I can kind of compare the three, you know, this, that, and then my 9960, which I have. Um, if you go back home, HD radio, whatever, I don't know, it's radio. I don't know what, what there's to say about it. You know, not, I don't know what emergency alerts are or, I don't know, this is actually pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's, this works nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of cool things to this. I like how in here they added this thing. That actually shows you what type of seeking. This is the seek little option up here, manual seek. This right here would be like a regular seek, I believe, just you know your standard seek. And then um, this would be like seeking by presets. Before you just had to guess, you didn't know what type of seek you're on. Um, one thing I don't like about this is the the capacitive touchscreen. It's really cool. You know, everyone's like they complain about oh, you know, the old Kenwoods like how the capacitive touchscreen was like outdated and stuff. I'm telling you, the capacitive touchscreen ain't bad. You know, this this touchscreen is like super sensitive. And, you know, I've had smartphones, quote unquote, for years. I don't know, people who call them smartphones still is kind of stupid. Every cell phone basically now is a smartphone. Anyways, you know, I've had nice cell phones with a nice Gorilla Glass, whatever, and that's all they use now. I mean, that's all they've used for years. But I mean, so I'm used to that. This is like sensitive. You'll be trying to like scroll through something and you'll bump something a lot. I've noticed that. It's it's like it's still cool, but I don't know, it's too sensitive. And I have no idea how to change that. The sensitivity. I don't I don't know if there is I don't think there's I know there's not a setting. I haven't seen it. Um and also on the DNN 992, you could like pinch to zoom on the um like on the map here. That was the only thing you could ever pinch to zoom on. This you can't. Now, they have like this advanced processor in here. Um, which is like, you know, you can scroll through here really fast, but I don't know, like you can't pinch to zoom. So I don't know. I, I kind of liked that on the DN uh, 992. Can't do it on this one. Um, here you got the telephone, whatever. I don't know. I'm not connected right now, but you know, whatever. It's a Bluetooth phone. Not much really to say on that. I don't think. Uh, this is a stupid button right here. <laughs> they gave a whole button to this right here, um, which supposedly switches between uh, Android Auto, uh, Apple CarPlay, and mirroring. Uh, okay, whatever. Uh, I think it's stupid that you have a whole button for that. But speaking of that, I could not. <laughs> I couldn't get Android Auto to work on here. I just couldn't. Uh, that's one reason I'm returning it. Plus, the HDMI input on this thing does not work. Uh, the AV in on the back, which I have a TV tuner connected to so I can watch TV in here. Uh, only the audio works on it. I could probably get the video to work on it if I sat there and experimented with, like, crap loads of cables that I'd have to go buy, but that's ridiculous. On my DNN 9960, never had to do that. Simple RCA input. Worked fine. Never had a problem from day one. This one is like, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's just stupid. The AV in on the back is a 3.5 millimeter, like mini jack, one eighth inch, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't know. I guess they have different like pinout uh, sort of um, 
like orders, like the audio might be in the first part of the pin and the video on the back or vice versa, and maybe that's why I can't get it to work. I have no idea. I'm just pissed that it doesn't work, and I don't know why I have to deal with that. I think that's stupid. Um, the Also, like the iDatalink Maestro, Maestro, whatever. I don't know how you even pronounce that. Don't care. Uh, my vehicle is too old. It won't even work on it anyways, but I've heard there's all sorts of issues with this. And supposedly that was like, oh, that's a new feature. Um, no, it's not. The DNX 892, which is a 2015 model, had that. Um, what else? The um, I do like the menu. I think the menu system is very simple, which is good. But you lose a lot of stuff. Like my 9960, there were so many features, like so many customization things you could do. And yeah, the... Well, actually, the, the the setup menu on that was pretty straightforward, too. The DNN 992 from last year was crappy, like, the setup. Like, there was, like, all these different ways to get up in the setup menu, and there was, like, three different setup menus. It was totally confusing and not straightforward. This is actually very straightforward. Um, I find it very easy to use, but they've... So it's like, if they would have done that, like, okay, simplify and make it cool and everything... And make it and make it simple and whatever. But they did that, but then they also eliminated like all sorts of features. Like the stupid like the counter I was telling you and, and the slider. And when I say slider, what I'm saying is hold on, let me get back here. Oh, I didn't have to do that. But anyways, yeah, here's another menu. Like if you do the apps thing, it'll bring it. Let me go back. If you go here's your home screen. If you hit this, it brings up this screen, and then you can hit this over over you can actually customize this home screen uh right you can yeah you can customize you can customize the top these three and then you can customize like these seven by dragging them there um anyways i had a point i was trying to make uh the setup menu yeah well i wanted to show you this but well even if you go back here this little gear thing will bring you back to that same screen I was on. It's cool. Like you have the AV out. Uh, you can select between AV in. Oh, see before I could choose from USB as well. I don't know. Let me focus. My camera's losing it here. That's a little better. Uh, da, da, da. Some of the stuff, I don't even know what it means, nor do I really care. Like I'm, I don't, I'm not an Apple guy. Uh, OEM stuff, I think, is more for, like, if you use that iDatalink Maestro thing. OSD clock, don't know yet. Uh, I could look it up, but historically, the Kenwood manuals blow. Um, <laughs> you just have to learn on your own by trial and error or going to kenwoodforms.com. Panel color, whatever. This is the same thing you've, they've always had. Background, you can change your background image. User interface, beep. This is cool. I don't know. You can, if you wanted to put parking lines... Um, on, I don't, clock, whatever, not, you know, straight, basic stuff there, uh, camera, S nothing new, oh, this is the parking guidelines, that rear assist thing, I guess I don't know what that is, what is this, I don't even know what this is, parking assist display, don't know, don't care, I do have a rear camera, but that's all I need, I don't need anything else, special, uh, demo, <laughs> it's a stupid demo thing, this is dumb, uh, why would I have that on? I guess if I was displaying it in a store. Audio setup, recall, okay, nothing new there. I'm saying based on if I compare it to older Kenwood models. Bluetooth stuff, okay. Security. <laughs> they have a whole they have a whole menu thing for if you want this stupid little red light to beep when it, when the unit is off. Okay. Navigation. Okay, volume. See this again, why this is I, I okay, I guess. But it seems stupid to have a whole square on this main setup menu devoted to the navigation volume. I don't know. Seems strange. Uh, the other thing that's very annoying is every time you turn this unit on, as you can see right at the beginning of this video, you have to click this stupid OK button. Like, oh, I acknowledge that I might kill myself if I'm not paying attention to the road. OK. Yeah, we know. Um, I guess the one upside to that is that then when you go to nav, Navigate here. You don't have to click the acknowledgement there. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think positive, okay, I, I guess. But I'd rather have to click this the few times, the rare times that I, I use it, the navigation a lot. But, I mean, 
you know, I don't use navigation every time. Why do I have to click that OK thing every time? It's just stupid. Um, another plus, I'm not trying to just complain. This thing is pretty fast. Like, it is faster than my 9960. Um, what else could I show you here? Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, disc. There ain't much to show you on disc other than, you know, it plays a CD. whoop de doo um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to point out the bad things about this. There's good things. I mean, it, I'm just disappointed because, like I said, it's 1200 bucks, And, you know, there's there are cool things. But look, if I go to a USB, I mean, I listen to USB stuff all the time. Like, I have thousands of songs on, like, my regular USB. This, ain't, this is just some stupid test USB I have in here. But I mean, and I have movies on there, and like, I can't even see where in the song I am. The scroll bar thing is what I was trying to say before. On my 9960 and the DNN 992 and the 892 that came out last year, there would be like a scroll bar at the bottom. Like, you know, like that's showing like how far along in the song you are, and the scroll bar little thing hits the end. Okay, you're done with that song. It would have a timer. Like, wow, what a novel idea to have a timer to know like where you are in the song. It's like they don't have that this on here. Like, are you kidding me? I don't know. Like, that's like a major problem for me. I know that sounds really stupid, but at the same time, if I'm spending twelve hundred bucks, um, no, no, I'm no, I'm not actually. I'm returning it. Screw you. I'm not doing that. Um, yeah. So actually, I'm I'm actually going back to last year's model. I'm getting an eight nine two. I just ordered it. I put in a request for a refund on this one. I'm sending it back probably tomorrow. Um, you know, it is cool. It's got a lot of cool stuff on it. Well. It, but it's got a lot of the stupid design things on it too. Um, I, I do like this. I think this this is a cool feature. Whatever you can hit this and it kind of like pages down four at a time, and it shows you your little scroll bar over there. Um, you can sort of drag it, and it's it's pretty smooth and 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 um, responsive. But like like here's an example. You have this whole slide out menu. Why do they even have these stupid minuses here? Like. If you go to the satellite radio and you do that same thing, watch what happens. Well, I'm, am I still on pause? Oh, I was still on pause there. Wow, 12 minutes. That's weird that it's still paused. That's actually pretty cool though. Um, you do this over here and okay, it's actually got stuff. And it's got two little minus dash things. I don't know. It's like, it seems stupid. Like, if you don't have anything there, why does that menu thing even come out? If you, if you go back to the um, USB, though, the only thing that does come out is a minus and a plus folder. Like, what this does is it goes to the next, the next folder, okay? Um, or minus to the next folder. And I guess if... And again, trying to be positive here, one cool thing about this, I guess, with the USB is they got rid of, like, the FAT32 format requirement you could do. I think that's what, yeah, FAT32. I don't even know what the hell that means, but that basically was the whole, like, 255 files per folder and 255 um, folder limit, uh, which took me a long time to, like, get used to and figure out. So in which case, now you can like just have, I guess, any number of files and any number of folders. So, you know, the smart thing to do if, if you were to go get this unit would be to just have like it like I have here. I have every single um, album with its own folder and it's just sorted alphabetically. Um, so, yeah, see, I, I run the gamut here of all sorts of different stuff I have on here. But um Anyways, I think that's all I got. It's This video is already 20 minutes long. I just wanted to kind of show you the basic stuff here that I thought maybe would be helpful to someone that was looking at this unit. So, hope it's useful to someone out there. Later.